Hello, wonderful people, and thank you for joining me to see the fantastic updates we've made to make your point cloud workflows simpler, quicker, and more effective. I'm Linda Sharkey, Technical Marketing Specialist at Brixis. In v26.1, we've introduced a far more intuitive point cloud manager. We've updated the ways in which point clouds with geographic information are handled. We've introduced improvements to point cloud visualization, and we've improved the way that we work with LGSX formats. I'll also show you where to grab some demo data sets if you want to play along. First up, let's have a look at the differences between V25 and V26 when it comes to pre-processing point clouds in BricsCAD. Now in V25, even though you could work with multiple types of point cloud formats, the pre-processing dialogue was a little basic. Now we've updated it to include a thumbnail and metadata, such as whether the point cloud has scans, normals, uh, UCSs, the number of points, and more. Some of these metadata can be changed. So for example, you can rename a scan in order to make it easier to identify. If you work with outdoor scans, you may notice that there are geographical coordinates associated with it. This will show up in the dialog box, and when attaching, you'll be asked whether you want to use it. Note that if you do, then it'll override the coordinate system associated with the drawing. So make sure you have your workflow set up beforehand. When you attach the point cloud, you can continue to use it in your survey workflows with things such as adding maps from an internet server. Here, we use the geomap command to add some background mapping. And note that by adding the point cloud with geographic location data means we don't have to set it. We can just add an online map, in this case, from an Esri server. And voila, you have a background map for your point cloud. Other things you can do are switching off the classes within the point cloud itself, except for ground and you can create a tin surface. Now make sure that you keep an eye on the command line when you're doing this uh, so that you can set variables such as whether you want to simplify the tin and by how much. Once you're done, you have a tin surface that can be used in any type of civil workflow, just as any other. If you want to play around with this functionality to see how it can make your workflows more efficient, you can find the sample data set that I'm using at Data Store Brussels. Uh, search for Urbis LiDAR. You can choose the format, geographic projection, and version, although we don't have to worry about that here because there's only one option. Next, you select the grids that you want. The grid I'm using in this particular example is 151777, then hit download. Now, remember that these point clouds can be very large, so one at a time works best. If you wanted to play around with any other data sets, they're all there, just play around and download as you see fit. Right, next up, let's switch from the civil workspace to a modeling workspace and have a look at what other goodies are in store for us. We'll attach a point cloud and zoom in. This point cloud has scan, 79 of them. And you can look at these, look at these bubbles and we'll have a quick look at one of the bubble views by double clicking on it. Remember that if you click in the bubble view window and hit control A, you can auto-synchronize the scan and camera. So using your middle mouse button to click and drag your photo will drag the point cloud along with it. Now, this isn't new, it's just cool and I wanted to remind you of it. What we're looking at here is this scan in V25. Now, if we head over to the render settings on the Point Cloud Manager panel, we have bubble visibility, size, adaptive display, point size, and more, including dollhouse rendering. So let's head over to V26. 
and you'll see that the render panel has been redesigned. You now have the ability to specify the number of points on screen. Just use the arrows to go up or down in increments of 5 million. And this makes it super easy to have a light point cloud when setting up views or navigating with the option to show more points for visuals at a later time. You can change bubble options to resize, show, hide, or show visible, both in the bubble view and the drawing view. Now let's have a bit more of a look at the dollhouse and x-ray render modes. We'll attach a point cloud, clip the points to the inside of a rectangle by choosing the clip option and then specifying inside at the command prompt. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough, always keep your eye on the command prompt when you're working with point clouds. So many times something will pop up and you're thinking, well, now I don't know what to do. It's waiting for input right there. On the Point Cloud Manager panel, choose the render settings. Right now it's on default. And then click Dollhouse. Now this gives us the illusion of taking the roof off. And Outline gives us the impression of taking the roof and the floor off. Now Geek Alert, these render modes hide or show points based on whether normals are pointing away from the camera view or perpendicular to the camera view. You don't have to have a complete understanding of normals to use these render modes, but it's important to note that they behave differently based on your view. The best way to use these modes is with a top view. If you want to take these features for a spin, then you can find the data sets that I used from the University of Zurich, Department of Informatics, Visualization and Multimedia Lab. So under the research data sets, you'll find many free options. And for this one, I've used the Penthouse data set. The way that users can work with LGSX data has been improved. Now, the processing of this has two steps, really. One is the actual processing of the points, and the other is visual optimization, which can take up to 30% of the processing time. So we've improved this workflow by showing the point cloud almost immediately and continuing to process any bubbles that might be associated with the cloud in the background. So purple bubbles mean they're still being processed for things like normals or depth per point. And then once they're finished, they'll switch from purple to green, meaning it's fully processed. Now this means that data shows up even faster and you can continue to work whilst your point cloud finishes processing. Another difference with LGSX format is that if you've scanned with multiple user coordinate systems, these will be available when you're working with the point cloud. Now remember, user coordinate systems are set within the Leica Geosystems software, whatever you're using there. You don't set them in BricsCAD. But if those have been set up, then what we've created in V26 will make it easier to handle complex geometries like multiple floors or sloped walls, and it improves accuracy for measurements. Um, it also streamlines and facilitates modeling and designs. And with that, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this session. I hope you learned some new stuff. And remember, we have way more new stuff on our V26 webpage from people far, far smarter than I am. So scan the QR code to learn more. And until next time, have a great day.